Hey kids, Inverted Cal here. Welcome to Flotsam. Uh, I played this game yeah, about a year or so ago. Uh, it's had quite a few updates in the way it plays since then. So I figured, you know what? Let's jump into a new game. Since Raft has announced that they're going to delay their output of Raft for <laughs> probably another three or four months. Um, yeah, this is a close second. This is a fun game. Uh, average play time is probably... Uh, you can pretty much complete everything in this game in probably about... I'm going to say probably about uh, 10 hours. Uh, so there's not a lot of content to it. It's fun. It's kind of kind of cheesy, but it's okay. So we're just going to start up a new game. Now the way this game originally was, was you started out with a, your little boat and you just went from one area to the next and collected everything. They got rid of the area. It's now a map. So that'll be the first change that we'll see, as well as the fact that your entire boat, your town, floating town, uh, moves. That's the second big change. Um, seagulls now have their own special house. What shall we call our town? Anything but Salmon's Gate. How about Doomsville? Now, can't have unsinkable Doomsville. Alright, Doomsville. You start out with a little... kind of a smelly old tugboat. And I think... one of the... Oh, hush. When is somebody still talking? Um, I think you gotta fix it. I just don't know how. I don't know how yet. It's been a long time since I played this game. Expand. Yes. We'll set up a swimming thing here. We'll add all three people to it. As you can see, you have an entire area, uh, like a map, if you will, and it shows everything on this area, like all the resources, all the nodes, all the island things, everything. So you don't have to just start and go to one zone and harvest two or three buildings and then go to another zone, harvest two or three buildings. So there's that. Now, I gotta figure out how to open survival guide. Hey, there's an idea. Um, building, storage, research. Oh, they changed the way research works. You know, you have to go find books and build a research station, which is nice. Uh, there we go. Uh, you'll need... Select the town heart that it rests on. Okay, that's what I did. Or is it... Right click? No. Ah, right there. Big button that says repair engine. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I don't know if it needs anything to repair engine, but uh, my my jokers can get back to doing that. I have an overall amount of fuel, and as you can see. Like the islands, I can't swim that far, 
but there is an island right here and if I scroll up to the map you see it's just outside of the swim range the, the range of swimming the range I have is currently highlighted in a light blue when you start building boats it will expand um, but I could scroll the map over and see this island as well and I could probably even go and see that seagull's nest can turn my thing around here. There we go. Here's one of the new islands they added to Seagull's Nest. So I could literally interact with this island, even though it's outside of my area that I can work. I can already interact with these areas, which is it, really quite helpful. Um, fairly early game. Because all I have to do is literally just move the boat a little bit to get to the next spot. Now we're pretty limited on what we can build. Uh, I'm collecting plastics right now so I can build plastic walkways. There is two different types of walkways now. They changed that as well. It's not just a single thing. You actually have a wood walkway or a plastic walkway, which is nice. Um, and of course your drying rack, your small drying rack, or your large drying rack. The drying racks now only, as far as I know, only do wood. So there's that. Um, and you you start with three different um, what do you call them? Three different basic foods. As you research, you will find more. And you still only have the two types of boat. So we're just going to take plastic walkway and we're going to come off the side of this hull here. I like the fact that they added uh, outlines so you can see where your connection point is and where it's going to end so you don't have to play around. But then it also shows where your square end is. Because this was something that always bothered me is you couldn't find where stuff was. So you just click and drag. We're going to take it out 16 to the limit of 16. Okay, switch to 24 right. Come on, place it. Place it. There you go. Now in the state of symmetry here, we're going to do the same again on this side. you can still order buildings while the game is paused so I could actually if I wanted to pause it and order up all my constructions um, yeah that's not uh, like I, I can do that but I can speed this up too and get this going at full speed get these two idiots going uh, the sound of hammers pounding in the morning okay now again, we don't have any resource collection happening. We don't have anything. We're just basically working on our stores that we have in, on board. I like to try to do is have the ship stores showing at all times. Um, as we build up here, storage menus and such, I will uh, improve, if you will, uh, the way ship stores are laid out. For now, we're just going to grab a ship store and we're just going to pop it right down here as close to that as we can. And I'm going to keep symmetry and do the same on this side as well. Uh, the reason for that is I do want to have processing close to the ship, but I will eventually do is I'll have one side that is food production one side that is resource production, so it's one or the other. Um, and then I have, usually tend to do, is I'll have all of my ships, my little uh, tugboats and stuff in the back, behind the thing. Um, housing will be on one side above the resource production and uh, farming, the, the food collection and food 
water collection will all be in the food side. Um, that's how I usually try to build it, so it's kind of laid out and organized. So that's the plan. Now we're just going to get this back up to speed, let these two idiots get back to work. As you can see, we are going up and down in plastic right now. there was a way to look almost straight down on this. I don't suppose there is. That's okay. I want a plastic plastic. straight back again with the plastic walkways okay that brings the plastic walkways we'll just order those and let them build that order two of those drying wood racks okay the drying racks are built um, can't build the sawmill woodworking shed, sorry, until I get dry wood. And I can build an oil refinery. What about water? I can build the water bottle as well. So I need the dry wood next. Now, the problem is, of course, um, I think the wood is outside of my swimming radius. I'm going to see if I can put a swim marker down on it. I might be able to. Yeah, I'm going to expand that fully. So now that they can collect wood, and again, I'll put all three guys on the wood. And let that get back up to speed. Now, for now, I don't really care. I'm not doing any regulation on any of the uh, storage units, whatever they put in there, they put in there. Uh, mainly because I only have the three storage things uh, for now. Okay, they've cleaned up a lot of the plastic and debris in the area here. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to take this ship and I'm going to move it closer to this shack town first. tempted to move it actually over here so I can get that get both of those islands and that plastic waste all in the swimming circle now unfortunately you can't zoom in so you can just see the ship move which would be really cool if they do that but I'm hoping that comes in at a later date now everything is in the swimming circle uh, here so what I can do is now I can order again a new salvage on this plastic. Bring that up to full size. I have to reorder this salvage marker because this one got deleted. But now I can also do is swimming to this island and I can hit it on salvage. And I can assign multiples to this as well. Uh, so I can put all three crew members on each of these tasks. And the same goes for this large island. <clears throat> now that'll allow the crew to swim out to the islands and as you see, this guy's already on board with it. He swam out to the island and he's tearing apart this shack. Um, they can't carry as much as boats. Using boats for salvage is always better, but this works. Now the other thing is, is as you notice when we moved the town, 
it turned. So now the entire town is upside down or reversed as to what it was. Um, so that helps. This is part of the reason why I like to build it with a kind of a symmetry or a, a plan because it, you turn the town around and you, you suddenly zoom back in and it's like everything's backwards. <laughs> so now a woodworking shed. This is probably the most important shed that you will have in the game. And I'm going to order it right, right there. This is going to be right next to the main storage yard. I realize that. Yes, I normally would like to have sheds on the... Um, so you know what? Can I cancel that construction? Yes, I can. Woodworking shed. I normally I would like to have it on this side. So we're just going to put it in right... Uh, come on, quit moving. Right there. <clears throat> because I want this center area here as storage. So that, that works. Now what they'll do is they'll start slapping uh, dry wood into that project. I am running out of water very, very quickly. This is another big concern. Um, there is no water on this shack town. There is some food. And there's no water on this island, but there is some food. So if I don't get a water purifier going right away too sweet here, we're going to be uh, dying of thirst. So we'll order that right now. <clears throat> now, one of the biggest problems I had early game... Um, in the previous playthrough was if you set this up to do something it would always it, it just continues building it like I could set it to do uh, auto queue on woodworking and then if I go to production limits uh, production limits which I gotta find is the spot where production limits are I just have to see if I can spot it because mm, they have changed some of the UI around boys beacons research production limits there we go I like to try to set this down to 20 20 is one small storage yard full of firewood. And that's it. Oh, that's not, uh, sorry, that was not firewood. This is, so we'll put this back to 100. This, firewood, down to 20. We'll close that. Now I'm going to take this storage yard here and I'm going to select none so nothing should be stored in this yard and I'm only going to allow firewood and then I'm going to go to this storage yard and I'm going to click firewood out and this storage yard I'm going to click firewood out so I don't want storing firewood in every single thing uh, this was the big complaint I had was this thing would make firewood and it would use every scrap of wood you could ever encounter no matter how much firewood you had told it to make and how much firewood you had said stop at uh, it would always 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 make more you would have store i had large storage yards my first game playthrough i had the the largest size storage yard filled with firewood and i only had 20 ordered and it would just keep cranking and cranking and cranking. Uh, I'm hoping that that is something that they have fixed. Um, it's like it should respect production limits. Now this on the other hand, I'm just going to turn this on infinite. This will constantly draw firewood, so yes there will be a constant use of firewood. 
for making fresh water, but I need the fresh water because I'm down to two. I've got three drifters, three dumbass. Yeah, I got three idiots. Uh, and they're all starting to show signs of thirst. So that'll be it. I'll be out of water here and somebody will start getting thirsty and cranky. Now, I do believe that they have made it so that they will actually consume directly from a production unit. So they will come over here and grab firewood directly from the firewood thing and take it straight into this rather than going through the intern step of putting it in storage. Um, as well as water, they'll just take it from here and drink it rather than putting it in storage and then drinking it. So hopefully that'll cut down on some early game deaths from things like running out of water. Because as you see, he just grabbed that and he went straight over. Now I am going to put a walkway in behind here where there is a hitbox for this. Uh, for this uh, propeller. I don't know how far back it is. As you see, it's right there. So if I go back uh, one square more. Okay, I can go right here as a walkway. Yes, I ordered it out of wood. Wood is the resource I have going right now. Um, and I'm not too worried because both resources, wood and plastic, are usually in great abundance. Uh, I've got a wood salvage right here. Plus, I'm getting wood off of these island shacks. This has been harvested. What about this one here? They're working on this one. Uh, and I will get some canned food out of here as well, so my food stocks should go up somewhat. But now he has a shorter path from this firewood place to this water thing, so he should go straight over. Plus, now I can start putting uh, additional storage units in here. Okay, seaweed, seaweed farm, and a chop shop. The chop shop is a new one on me. This is a new building I haven't seen before. So we're going to order one of those. And I'm going to... Yeah, I'm out of plastic again. Wow. Right in beside the chop shelf. I'm just going to run a straight line up. Two blocks like that. I'm just going to come straight off the front of the boat if we can. up here. Good enough. <clears throat> that way they can still run around the, the around the boat, but they can also run on the paths. This is going to become, my, as I said, my food production and farming area, which means I want to start getting some seaweed farms and such happening in here, which is what I'm working towards. Uh, seaweed growers that will be going in here. I'm going to have like, you know, things like the fish sticks. Uh, these these are the drying racks. Basically, they're good for drying fish. Uh, I'll be putting some of those down here later on. Um, going to order a couple of rope productions. I'm going to need a bunch of those at some point. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. That's going to do it for our first episode of Flotsam. I hope you're enjoying. Hope to see you on the next episode where we will work on getting our food production up and running and continue exploring the new changes to this game. And uh, I'll see you there. So thanks all for watching and good night for now.